the Speed Demons of Saturday afternoon racing. You might look at it as the second level to the Cup Series. There's a lot of good drivers that are, you know, Cup level drivers that just don't have a, a place there right now. It's the place where the NASCAR Cup Series drivers get their final test before the big show. Crew members, engineers, crew chiefs, you name it. Everybody come, you know, it's a great, a great stepping stone, a great proving grounds for talent. But what exactly is the NASCAR Xfinity Series? Who are its stars today? And who are the stars of tomorrow? Tonight, before the Xfinity Series makes its debut on its new home on the CW Network, we take you from here to Xfinity. There are few tracks in the world like the Bristol Motor Speedway, nicknamed the last great Coliseum. It's a battle every time 36 cars hit the high banks. This weekend on this racetrack marks a changing of the guard for the NASCAR Xfinity Series as NASCAR Stock Car Racing makes its debut on the CW Network. Over the next half hour, we're going to introduce you to the sport, its stars, and its history. Starting with, what is the NASCAR Xfinity Series? When the casual sports fan thinks of NASCAR, they picture the NASCAR Cup Series. That's the premier series in the sport. Think of it as Major League Baseball. The next series on the racing ladder is this one, the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Think of it as AAA Baseball. There are two other national series, the Craftsman Truck Series, which would be AA Baseball, and the Arkham Menard Series, or Single A Baseball. So how did the Xfinity Series become what it is today, a place where the next stars of the sport are born? To find that out, we have to go back to the sport's beginning 76 years ago. From the moment NASCAR was founded in 1947, inside the Streamline Hotel in Daytona Beach, Bill France Sr. was already thinking about the next big thing. We started in 1948 with what's now the NASCAR Modified Series and then the Strictly Stock Division, which has become the NASCAR Cup Series, and what was added in 1950 was the NASCAR late model sportsman division. The sportsman name came from these are like gentlemen racers versus the professional racers and the modifieds. But that's, that's the roots of what is now the Xfinity series. The series as we know it today saw its first green flag drop in 1982. Thanks to the addition of sponsor Budweiser, which reimagined the series and its purpose. They just ran mostly on short tracks throughout the South. Uh, they would race at places like Hickory and South Boston. The only real super speedways they ran on was Daytona, Rockingham, Dover, and Charlotte. The series quickly became a place where young and upcoming drivers could test their skills against the top drivers from the Cup Series. NASCAR Cup Series drivers can participate at the lower levels for up to five races a year. And one of the things that does for the sport and for these drivers who are looking to get to the top level is to race against the very best. And history has shown winners in this series can become stars on the next level. Since 1998, just about every Xfinity Series champion has gone on to win in the Cup Series. NASCAR and Xfinity promote it as names are made here, but that's more than a marketing moniker. You can actually see the history of Hall of Famers like Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth, Dale Earnhardt Jr., who came up through what is now the NASCAR Xfinity Series to go on to be winning drivers, champions, and Hall of Famers. So here's a look at the former Xfinity Series champions who are now racing in the Cup Series. Martin Truex Jr. is a two-time champion in 2004 and 2005. Kyle Busch won the series title in 2009. Brad Keselowski in 2010. And Chase Elliott won the title in 2014. Those four would all go on to win the sport's biggest prize, the NASCAR Cup Series title. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Austin Dillon, Chris Buescher, Daniel Suarez, William Byron, Tyler Reddick, Austin Sindrick, Daniel Hemrick, and Ty Gibbs are all former Xfinity Series champions, now in the Cup Series. So what's it like to race in the Xfinity Series on a weekly basis? This series has just been so much fun for me. We catch up with some of the veterans in the garage to find out why they keep coming back to the track. Plus, it's a dream come true for, for lack of a better term. We go for a ride around the Charlotte Motor Speedway with one of the up and coming drivers in the sport.
the Xfinity Series is is the college football of, of our sport. You have drivers that are kind of in all ranges of the career. You know, a huge part of the sport, racing on Saturdays and preparing, you know, guys to go cup racing one day. You get the experience at a lot of these styles of racetracks that you, you can't do in a, in a weekly series. It's just a really good place to learn. Um, you know, for me, coming from dirt track racing, it was just a huge place for me to learn. To be able to be successful in the Cup Series, you have to have uh, a strong uh, resume in the Xfinity Series. The thing about the Xfinity Series is it attracts drivers of all kinds, from young guys just trying to make a name for themselves in the sport to old guys who have been around for a while. Cole Johnson caught up with some of the series vets to find out what makes this series so special. When growing up, all young drivers aim for that chance to drive and get in the winner's circle on Sundays. But what about those who have hung around and settled for the early stages of the weekend? Well, for some of the veterans of the sport, the Xfinity Series feels like home. The Xfinity Series, ultra competitive racing full of hungry drivers eyeing their shot and making a name for themselves. Good, hard, aggressive racing. Oh, contact made into the wall hard. I feel like the top 15 guys in Xfinity, you don't know who's going to win every weekend. Because everybody knows what's at stake. Everybody wants to be noticed and um, hopefully one day race on Sundays. But that may not be the case for every driver. While the series does include many young stars chasing the ranks up to the Cup Series, it's also a mainstay for well-known veterans. I've been lucky enough to be with a great team now for a number of years, and, and I haven't taken that for granted, and I, and I feel like that, that that's what's been important to me and, and why I've stuck around the Xfinity Series for so long. Guys like 15-year Xfinity vet Justin Algaier or reigning series champion Cole Custer. Even though you know it might you, you might look at it as a second level to the Cup Series, there's a lot of good drivers that are you know Cup level drivers that just don't have a, a place there right now. You have drivers that are kind of in all ranges of their careers, coming in, they're just starting out. But then you also have veterans that guys like myself that have been around the sport for a long time that found a great home with a great race team and are able to compete on a weekly basis for, for, for race wins and, and for championships. Consistently chasing championships being the key, especially for the mix of veterans who have dipped their toes in both worlds, living through the dichotomy of one series to the other. Xfinity, I feel like we're a big team. The Cup side, we're, we're a small team. On the Cup side of it, we're new. I was never a guy that came up through the ranks. It was like I was just thrown to the wolves and that's kind of like how I had to manage of, of staying in the sport was just trying to, to learn on the fly, really. A career of managing expectations from week to week, all while embracing their current place in the sport. Cole Custer is an Xfinity Series champion. Pursuing titles and cementing a legacy along the way. I mean, to be a back-to-back -back champion in the Xfinity Series is a pretty cool title, so um, we have to work hard to do that. Everything is more intense from the garage opening to first practice to qualifying to race. That's what we all live for, and we're excited to get there. Well, now the chase is on. All four of those drivers we just saw indeed in the hunt for that elusive Xfinity Series title with the playoffs creeping in. He's one of the hottest names in the NASCAR Xfinity Series right now. I understand how to, how to get around, and yeah, things just sort of started to snowball. But who is Shane Van Gisbergen? We'll introduce you to the rising star from New Zealand, plus... Our regular circulating collection, which is mostly... Most all the books we have are arranged here. We will take you to the mecca of racing archives hidden in the North Carolina mountains. There are a handful of guys in sport that you recognize by just their initials. MJ, RG3, KD, just to mention a few. In NASCAR, there is SVG. Chris Womack caught up with this rising star in the Xfinity Series. As I was preparing for this interview, you know, I'm trying to look up information on you. Yep. There's not a whole lot of, about you out there other than your racing career. That's good. It's possible to be both world famous and relatively unknown at the same time. Shane Van Gisbergen has figured out that mystery. People in this day and age, they 
have so much access to, to people, but I love to try and get away from it as well. So, yeah, happy for everyone to know everything they want about me and the racing side, but personal side, I try and switch off. Shane Van Gisbergen has been perfect. Van Gisbergen accelerated onto the scene last year when he won the Chicago street race in his NASCAR Cup debut. We do a lot of street races in Australia, and. And yeah, it was something that I would be able to do quite well at. I'd understand how to, how to get around and yeah, things just sort of started to snowball. The New Zealand native was a known commodity in Australia where he won three Supercars championships. To shine now, celebrating his Repco Supercars championship victory. But an opportunity presented itself to come to America and compete for Trackhouse Racing. Project 91 is what put him in the seat in his Windy City conquest. It was time, I guess. I'd done Viet Supercars for a very long time, and just what vision and plan Justin had and how he talked about how things could work, I was fully on board with it. The learning curve was as smooth as an oval. But a cup car is like a normal race car. Um, standard sort of chassis, independent rear end and, and differential. It's, you know, it's pretty, pretty normal. Normal? only begins at the start-finish line, though. Shane Van Gisbergen! I love the pre-race stuff. It's pretty full-on every week, but how they do the driver intros and you walk out like a catwalk almost, and there's all the fans, you're high-fiving everyone and fist-bumping. It's been pretty overwhelming. It's been awesome, though. Like, everyone's really nice and happy to have me here. They're going to get a lot more of it. Van Gisbergen will be joining Trackhouse full-time for Cup next year. I'm going to get a lot of experience before next year, and that's really good. It's just seat time and no expectation on results. And he's more than happy to take us all along for the ride, as long as we know it ends when the ride stops. Is there anything from the personal side that you're you're willing to reveal? I, I don't know, a, <laughs> a favorite band or...? Uh, people know enough. <laughs> So where do the next stars of the Xfinity Series come from? Corey Heim drives full-time right now in the Truck Series and part-time in the Xfinity Series. But he's on the fast track to success in NASCAR. What has this last couple of years been like for you? I mean, it wasn't that long ago. You were just like a, a short track racer doing his thing. Now you've got a cup star, you're part-time in Xfinity, full-time in trucks. What has all this been like for you? No doubt. I mean, it's it's a dream come true, for, for lack of a better term. I mean, this is uh, what I grew up doing since I was five years old and grew up dreaming of doing. So um, just being a part of NASCAR in general is such a cool feeling, and uh, it's definitely different than I kind of expected it to be. I mean, it's way more just natural for me. I thought it was going to be so much tougher um, you know, to kind of get used to these cars and take me a lot longer, but, um, you know, I've just worked so hard at practicing my craft and making sure when I get these opportunities, I, I make the most of them, and I feel like I've, I've done just that so far. Obviously, your focus right now is, is in the truck series, but what has it been like uh, running in the Xfinity series and then the, the couple of cup races, uh, to kind of testing your, your skills against the, the next level that you're headed towards? Yeah, I really haven't even gotten much of an opportunity to look back and reminisce on those starts. It's all happened so fast. You know, I feel like my, my truck career has been more mapped out and I've kind of known what I'm doing before I ever go and, you know, do it. But, um, you know, these Xfinity and Cup starts have just come at such weird times and kind of unexpected, you know, filling in for Eric at, at Dover in Kansas when he got injured. Um, never intended on doing that, of course, with the injury, but um, had to drink through a fire hose and kind of understand all that information in a very short period of time and um, it was tough but you know just coming from you know that experience I feel like I'm, I'm very glad I got that opportunity even you know within the circumstances of course but um, tough nonetheless but I'm um, certainly glad I got that experience. What, what's kind of your what's your roadmap? What do you what do you see in the future past this year or even thought about past this year? You know I've uh, I've never been a driver that really knows you know um, <laughs> there, there's some drivers that really have their career laid out and mapped out but um, I've always taken it year by year, not by choice, but, you know, it's just kind of the way it's worked out for me. Um, you know, I've been with Toyota for, uh, this is my fifth year now going in with them and um, just being able to trust them and their their judgment and what they need to do to, to get me to the top level at a successful and mapped out manner. Um, and so far it's been very successful. So uh, just kind of going by what, what they think. You, know, you never know what's going to show up at your door in a box. The library at Appalachian State University is home to the most extensive race archives in the country. We'll show you how it all came together. Plus, a lot of these leagues, like us, realize like 
You know what? We need to produce our own content. We'll take you on a tour of the new NASCAR production facility that will be used to produce races right here on The CW. If you are a fan of the history of the sport, you can certainly find plenty of it in and around any racetrack. But just up the road in Boone, North Carolina, there is a treasure trove of racing artifacts that will excite any motorsports history buff. Tucked between the Appalachian Mountains, in the heart of NASCAR racing country, is a unique racing collection unlike any other. So I visited around uh, to other collections, Talladega, et cetera, and realized that nobody was really focusing on stock car racing at its broadest. That was the seed, which grew into the stock car racing collection at Appalachian State University. Here are odds and ends of collections. Um, Don Hunter, who was a former photographer in racing, gave us several things and we have a small collection of his stuff. Suzanne Wise has been the curator since its inception and the collection has evolved into a treasure trove of books, magazines, and one-of-a-kind memorabilia. An example is the Richard Petty collection, which Richard's wife, Linda, donated to us some years back. She had been collecting everything that Richard got through the years, and so she donated that to us, and we have a large collection of his material. And then the scrapbooks that uh, fam fans said, well, you know, I've kept this scrapbook of your exploits for years and years, so here it is. The collection, for the most part, is open to the public for research purposes or just for fans to educate themselves. If you don't happen to live in Boone, but you would like to check something out, your local public library or academic library has an interlibrary loan service. You can talk to them and they'll borrow it from us for you for a couple of weeks. This weekend will mark the first NASCAR race on the CW network. But how does NASCAR bring the sights and sounds of the racetrack to your living room? It's here in Concord, North Carolina, 58,000 square foot facility, state of the art, ready to do everything that we would have done in a truck on the road. We have a behind the scenes look straight ahead. So how does the CW bring the sights and sounds from a racetrack like Bristol here into your living room? I got an exclusive look behind the scenes of NASCAR's new production facility in Concord, North Carolina. Studio three. This is the second of the three studios. This is one when you get your first glimpse of the NASCAR production facility in Concord, North Carolina, you can see it was built with growth in mind. This facility is probably gonna put us in a place to be in the forefront of what we wanna do with our own content. In the future, they've given us all the tools that we need to do it. From state-of-the-art production control, where directors and producers can access hundreds of feeds and cameras. This is like kind of command central, so um, this will be, during race day, will be full of people. The studios for TV, radio, and podcasting. NASCAR wants to take that next step to compete with other major sports. People really need to get the content faster and a lot of these leagues like us realize like you know what we need to produce our own content eventually this facility will be where talent for the races on the cw will broadcast each race yeah. using the latest technology to bring the sport into your living room for years the tell the sports television industry 18 wheelers rolled up and down the highways all around america to put on sporting events and we sat in those in those trucks and produced and directed live sporting events. Now we have this building. We're kind of in ahead of the game on that. We've been doing it for a long time. Um, and we're really proud at how well we do it. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing that to the fans of CW and putting the NASCAR Xfinity Series on display. The next era of NASCAR Xfinity Series racing starts right here on the CW this weekend in Bristol. Thanks for joining us from here to Xfinity. For Cole Johnson and Chris Womack, I'm Heather Williams. Enjoy the race.